Artemers. Today I wanted to be talking about something dear to pretty much everyone in the world, presumably, uh, and that is television. <laughs> More specifically, The Office, um, which has been one of my favorite shows since seventh grade. Okay, so yeah, 10 years of blissful, amazing Michael Scott and everyone else, Jim, Pam, the whole bunch, um, they're a riot, right? <sighs> to be more serious though, today I wanted to talk about television addiction. What TV does, it gives you um, amazing amounts of people to watch and it feeds you dopamine and all of those amazing hormones that you need and the socialization and the new word that the internet just came up with of parasocial relationship or something where you pretty much just feed yourself into something where you don't really get anything back. And that's exactly what television is. You know, I wake up, I turn on my television, and that's my day. Um, I'm trying to get out of that and start my day more like a healthy person, but um, we can talk about that later. <laughs> um, so The Office has been one of my favorite shows for 10 years and so because of that I've probably watched it like 20 plus 30 plus times. It's funny that uh, Netflix recently added their um, like little numbers on the things on the movie titles where it's like number one in the US today and I swear like ever since The Office has been there um, I don't know about right now exactly, but for weeks and weeks and weeks on end, and it was so hilarious. And so I can assuredly say, everyone's best friend is The Office. And it's kind of beautiful, and it's kind of not in its own right, but television is exactly what people need when they're lonely. And at the same time, I feel like it makes me a really lazy person. TV, uh, they have characters, and The Office has, you know, what is it, nine seasons of beautiful characters. You know, Michael, Jim, Pam, Kelly, they all look so different from season one to the very last season. And don't get me started about season one Donna from Parks and Recreation because so I wanted to start drawing out like a bunch of the people I didn't I couldn't find a perfect like uh, group of everyone just on Google but I ended up finding this really cute photo shoot with the main Michael Jim Pam and Dwight and it wasn't until I was like inking out or sketch inking when I realized it was season one Michael's hair and then I had to decide do I change this? It's so bad. It's so bad. I honestly I'm surprised that they don't like um, that they don't add in the show like that Michael gets hair plugs because he's like super kind of like vain in a way. You know, they talk about his vasectomy and you know, but not him like just suddenly looking much, much better. So in having to decide between, you know, changing season one Michael's hair, I realized like Jim's hair changes. Pam's hair obviously very much so changes. I didn't realize how much everyone changes uh, visually slightly, but at the same time, like so much for the better. Like they look 
obviously better and it's so funny that Michael honestly just looks younger but we don't have to talk about hair for forever it just was definitely a decision and unfortunately I think I'm gonna keep it as season one Michael's hair just for the sake of not um, doing it over again Frickin' television addiction is so, like, such an affliction, if we can go rhyme in here real quick, because, like, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like there should be some sort of TVA, like, TV Anonymous, um, and, like, we could all just talk about our favorite television shows, and it's practically a book club, but honestly... No, we need to stop watching television and start doing more things. I was almost like thinking about getting some sort of uh, screen for my kitchen because it drives me wild that I can't watch things in there very easily. Um, and I realized that that's utterly insane. I would love to hear if any of you guys have a TV addiction and if we should start a TVA. Um, or if that's an acronym for something else, and it's gross, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Don't let me know. Actually, it's probably not, uh, appropriate. Yeah, The Office. I feel like it's been through me, through thick and thin. Like, it's still my favorite television show to this day. Like, there's other ones I watch all the time. Like, Criminal Minds has been one of my top faves. Parks and Rec, I've probably watched nearly as many times as The Office. Probably not due to just, you know, time frame. I, years and years of watching, years and years of watching. Um, comparatively, I've probably seen uh, Star Trek The Next Generation the same amount as Parks and Rec. Um, but I just uh, watch that to bed like every night for the past like five years off and on. There was a good chunk of time where I watched The Shining to bed and other movies to bed because they're less distracting and you know the character development that you constantly want to watch. No, I swear watching the beautiful character development of the Star Trek Next Gen characters is so freaking beautiful. My sister says she won't watch past when Will Riker grows a beard which is like season two, and I tell her that that is an irrational and bad decision because there are like seven more seasons of just utterly amazingnessness. So it's, it's just a big cluster up here, character development and people you care about and things that you just can't stop like being drawn to, even it's not, when it's not like the direct storyline, it's just like you want to rewatch things just to watch like the ooh little nitty gritties, you know what I mean? Like the, um, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to just describe this in like a blanket statement. Even uh, my boy, uh, my boyfriend, he sits there and then I sit here and then we have this middle screen here. Uh, to watch TV because, you know, why not? He's doing his own thing, I'm doing my own thing. Um, admittedly, he never actually looks at the screen and he swears he uh, follows along to everything, but I just can't, like, stop looking, right? Because there's always, like, something happening that you don't, you don't, like, hear, you know? like little smirks and little side eyes and dances. Yeah, he almost missed the part where Aaron does the thing. Uh, <laughs> I realized the other day that, you know, it literally cuts off, right, as she like points her finger and I asked him like, how do you think her dance continues? Do you, do you think she wiggles the finger or do you think she puts it down and put the other one up? You know, because if you do both, uh, my brain, it can't handle it. <laughs> Overall, The Office is so amazing. Um, 
My sister, I don't think she's watched the last season yet because she has yet to watch the last season of Parks and Rec, the entire last seasons, which is just like, both of them are so like fully rounded and I won't say any more just like in case anyone else is watching. Just so much happens in trying to end a series and like fully encumber and enclose and closure and you know sometimes there's nostalgia from season one through whatever and it's just so beautiful um sometimes i literally will end season you know nine or eight seven parks and rec um pretty sure it's seven i shouldn't even worry um and then I'll go to the season one, episode one, and I'll look at Leslie's terrible hair and makeup, and I'll look at uh, Michael's terrible hair and probably makeup. It's just crazy to go from the end and the beginning, and then you remember, ah, it's so good. I did realize though that the, um, when Saber is buying the company, and Toby has to talk to the auditor about, um, like, everything about the goings-on. But it's like a cute little, like, end of the series sort of thing, uh, where they have so many flashbacks of everything and everyone throughout the entire show, even, like, season one. Um, but that's, like, the second to last season. It wasn't even an end of the season thing. It was so funny. But... The office itself has so much to give you, dog. Like, right now, in the background, I have, like, on volume one, um, season eight of The Office. I can't tell exactly which one it is, but it's got Nellie and Dwight, and they've got this, like, weird sexual tension happening. And it's the fact that I can't remember what happens pretty sure nothing but you know you kind of hope uh and you kind of giggle and you're like "Ooh, i wonder what's gonna happen um but i'm pretty sure nothing happens uh admittedly i've only seen the last episode like five times no like two or three times it just makes me cry so much but the Decemberists are on it, just like how the Decemberists are at the, um, the Unity concert in Pawnee. It's so beautiful, and it just, like, it's Dwight and his fam singing Sons and Daughters. Man, I'm also watching a show called Insatiable with Debbie Ryan, and it's freaking amazing. I can't even think anymore. What did I say? I know I went into this wanting to talk about The Office a lot, but like, The Office is just the start of it, dude. The Office was just the first series that I really just embraced wholeheartedly with my entire heart. <laughs> and you know, the characters and you, you just become best friends. Uh, I don't doubt that it is still today on the top 10 series Netflix US whatever um because it's just amazing I could watch it 50 more times I miss Michael Scott already I want to go to season one already because you know at this point we're like way towards the end and I'm ready to cry on the last episode but not really. I'm, I'm barely prepared for it. <laughs> I think I just, you know, when you've been inside as long as I have, which is March, and that's like five months or something, you need some sort of socialization. You need some sort of person there, some sort of like, you know, ha ha, he he, boo hoo to get through the day or else you're like literally on the television show alone 
minus the fact that, you know, you're trading in half a million dollars for the food you want and television. And I've got my boyfriend, obviously, but right now he's at work. He works eight hours a, a day at night, and then he sleeps like seven or six hours during the day, and then I get to see him between four and eight. And then on the weekend. But either way, I'm practically alone all day, every day, and so without television, I would just be, like, literally so in silence, without any sort of human, unless I were to call someone, and that takes effort. <laughs> I was watching Alone the other day, and it said on the bottom screen that being bored and inactivity can lead to anxiety, depression, and aggressive behavior. <laughs> and the other day, I realized, I was like, boo, you're my only source of human contact right now. I'm so sorry. And, like, we made up, and we haven't, like, been mad at each other, you know? It goes on day to day. But, like, It's just ridiculous, and that's why TV is like right there, and that's why it's so hard to not watch TV. You know, you gotta get through the morning without some sort of watching anything, because then you're on the couch or stuck in a chair, like when you want to do things on the weekends. And I realize after reading the thing on Alone about boredom and inactivity, that maybe I've been so anxious and I've been so depressed because I'm not doing anything. I literally just watch TV day in, day out, and I'm like, why am I always sick every day? Why do I feel like crap? I'm so fatigued. Why am I the saddest person? And it's like, go do something, dog. And so that's what I did today. I'm doing something. And I'm sorry I haven't in so long. Like, you know, sometimes when you're sick, you still gotta do stuff. Even when you're homebound. Even when you're a homebody. Even when you literally don't have a car and can leave your house. You have to do something. So, all this weekend and this week a little bit, I have been cleaning the house because I'm a crazy person and I have a hard time doing things that are fun without, you know, getting all the responsibilities out of the way or, you know, without being in a clean environment. So I've been cleaning like a madman and so yesterday, the day before, and today a teensy bit, I actually started to draw. And it was so amazing and I got to move my brain juices and my hand and, you know, ignore the screen. And honestly, that's why I switched back to the office because it's like my best friends and I know exactly what they're up to. And I got to stop putting on new shows that I have no idea what's happening. Like, I was outside a week ago after watching Insatiable, being like, why can I not? Um, why is this the best show in the entire world? That show's so exciting. Things happen in Debbie Ryan's life in that show all the time. And I was like, oh, it's because her life is moving in directions and it's ridiculous. And the ridiculous is the really entertaining part. But my life isn't moving freaking nowhere right now. Um, that isn't to say I don't like my life right now. It's just like, this year was supposed to go differently for obvious reasons. My plans, 2020, it's a whole meme. And so being stuck inside has just become the most boring thing in the world. 
And so to find a show that happened, like something that's happening is really exciting and crazy and ridiculous. It's like, how, it, how can you not be addicted to that and watch it day in, day out? You know, I'd love to hear if you guys have any sort of TV afflictions. Uh, we could start our own TV Anonymous and, you know, we can get over it. We can do stuff can look away from the television and not, you know, need it for our dopamine and good times. <sighs> That's the hope, right? I'm not at all sure how I was going to plan on ending this video, but I wanted to talk about all the TV shows I love, and I barely talk about Star Trek. Well, if you have gotten this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, stay tuned to hear more of my ranting and rambles and less researched videos. <laughs> uh, hit subscribe if you haven't, hit like if you like it, and I love you. Thank you.